Baby! I'm ready. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. So I've seen a lot of extremely cute mushroom hats on Instagram and Pinterest and I am dying to make one for Halloween. Most of the mushroom costumes I see are like very cute, very cottage core kind of vibes, but I'm thinking of doing something a little, a little different. So basically I want to make like a medieval style gown that looks rather ghostly. And one of the best parts is I will not have to buy a lot of fabric for this costume because I have so much leftover wedding dress fabric that has just been sitting in a closet for the past three and a half years. And part of me is like, do you really want to use your wedding dress fabric on a costume? And the other part of me is like, I have not used it at all in three and a half years. So like, may as well roll with what I'm feeling. So now I'll take you up to my new sort of crafting space and I'll show you the fabric and we can get started. I wanted to be a fall cutie for the intro, but it is September and it's still in the 80s. So I had to take my sweater off because I was getting way too hot. So we're here in my craft room. I haven't gotten a good background set up yet, but I'm gonna show you the fabric that I'm planning on using for this project. So the first one, the base for everything, is just this white polyester satin. Um, I have, ooh, probably like, probably like 10 yards of this. I have a lot. To layer over that, I'm going to use this Telio stretch chiffon, whoopsies. Telio stretch chiffon. Um, so it's nice, it will make a nice sort of like shirt and skirt. Initially I wanted this to be sort of a nude illusion gown, but then my husband was like, do you wanna answer the door for trick-or-treaters looking like you're kind of naked? And I was like, hmm, that's an excellent point. I will not be naked. <laughs> I wouldn't actually be naked. I was going to put nude spandex underneath everything. But now I'm not. I came up with an alternative design. Again, probably have about 10 yards left of this as well, so plenty for a huge double circle skirt. And then to layer on some stuff, I have some lace. This lace is just from Joann's, it's not super special. But again, I have a ton of it. Not like 10 yards worth, but... Uh, and I just realized you can totally see my shirt that I have tucked into champion shorts. <laughs> Fashion sweaty. I'm very excited. Let's get started. All right, I'm getting started on the first part of this costume. I'm using this Butterick 5935 pattern and I'm making the A variant. I'll be honest, haven't been following the pattern directions super closely. I think you're supposed to just make it all like your outer fabric and your lining fabric all together. I've not been doing that. I made the lining out of duck canvas for some stiffness. This is messing with my white balance really bad. Um, also, I cut out the pattern wrong, but you know, we're just gonna roll with it. Um, which is why the bottom looks like this. So I'll just trim it, because it's all gonna get bias bound anyway, so whatever. Looks really good over a sweatshirt. And then for the front of the fabric, I already have this done. This is like a little modesty panel for the back, but I'm using just my satin and lace. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really pretty. For the outer shell of the corset, I cut out all of my pattern pieces on the satin and lace. Then, just so nothing got misplaced, I basted the lace and satin layers together before sewing all of them at the seams. Hello, and welcome to the floor. It is the next day. I am wearing the same outfit as I was yesterday, as everybody does. I realized my pattern is fine. I sewed together the outer layer, which looks nice and smooth. So I was like, what is up with this bottom layer? I sewed in two panels backwards. So it's not because I cut the pattern out wrong. I did cut the pattern out wrong, but it's fixable. And I think I'm gonna have a nice, working little corset thing. So I've already unpicked stuff and just have to sew it back together. Should be pretty easy. 
So after re-stitching the lining layer, I laid the lining and the shell wrong sides together, and I used some fabric clips to hold the top and bottom together, taking some extra care lining up all the seams. put on a bit of a tighter shirt so I can actually fit this since I've just been putting it on over my sweater. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think I'll probably have to make this part a teensy bit shorter. But the back seems to be all right. If I need to take it in like half inch, that's fine. Yeah, I think it's going well. I think I want to put the boning channels on the outside um, instead of in the middle or on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of hand baste these inside and outside seams together just so it kind of stays nice and tight together and then stay stitch around the entire, well, everything except for the bottom because no. Actually, I can stay stitch around the entire thing because then when I make boning channels, I just stick the boning in there. That makes sense. Yeah, I can sew. I know how to do that. And baste those seams I did. I just used some fairly long straight stitches and went up and down through the seams. This was mostly to keep it all perfectly aligned before I sewed on some outer boning channels. I don't know if this is a real sewing technique, but it worked pretty well for me. After that, I just made a bunch of bias tape out of the satin and used it to make boning channels. I probably could have and should have just used some matching satin ribbon, but I didn't think about it until it was way too late. Then using even more bias tape, I bound the sides and top edge. The rounded shoulder straps look especially satisfying. And even though it does take a little longer, I hand stitched the bias binding down on the inside of the corset. Once that was all stitched down, I jammed some quarter inch plastic boning into the channels. After that, I just needed to bind the bottom of the corset and it was almost done. All it needed now was some grommets for lacing it up. I don't have an awl, so I just used my embroidery scissors to puncture a hole in the fabric and then shoved a paintbrush through the hole to make it big enough to fit my grommets in. Uh, the grommets are four and a half millimeters that I got in a little kit that just came with a hand press, and I honestly would not recommend them because four and a half millimeters is kind of an uncommon size, which did become a bit of a problem. I've been using, you know, my grommet kit to punch all the grommets into my corset and um, I had the perfect amount. I had enough for 10 on each side, um, except for I broke one. So I, I just one grommet left, so I had to order some more. And uh, these are gold <laughs> and these are brass. Um, and that might drive some people crazy but I'm not one of those people. I would just like this to be done. So, gonna put on the last little grommet and then lace this bad boy up and this part of the cos costume will be done. It's great. And finally, 10 grommets on each side. It's time to lace. I just used some quarter inch ribbon and used what I think is the double spiral method. I'm not exactly a corset expert, but I did leave two bunny ears in the middle of the lacing so it would be easier to cinch myself in. And that's the corset done! It actually turned out a little big on me, but since I'm on a Halloween time crunch, it'll do. Honestly, the rest of the outfit isn't super complicated, so I'll just speed through the other parts. A sheer undershirt made from the stretch chiffon. Two bell sleeves with elastic at the top so they can be removed. And finally, a satin and chiffon circle skirt because I love circle skirts. Three super easy pieces, and that's the whole gown done. Hello, I have applied a wig poorly, but we're gonna make the mushroom hat now. So I thought of all the ways I could over-engineer this hat, but I figured cardboard would be the cheapest 
cheapest, cheapest, and easiest, since like many of us, I have too much just laying around. So I first traced a huge circle onto my cardboard using a pen and some string, and I outlined it in Sharpie so you could see it better. Then I just used a box cutter on my cutting mat to cut it out. Please don't use a box cutter on your floor. Next I cut out a long strip of cardboard and bent down the length of it for some flexibility. Then I wrapped it around my head and secured it with some tape. This was a little thick so I ended cutting it down later. To make it stay more securely on my head, I used two more cardboard strips crossed at the top and secured at the sides with some more duct tape. And now I have a very elegant cardboard crown. Now I can put my cardboard circle and my crown together by cutting a hole in the big circle and then just taping it all together. Don't be shy with the tape. Once the base was done, it was time to start building out that mushroom shape. I started by making a little X with two squares of cardboard and hot gluing them to the top. I got this idea from another tutorial that I will be sure to link in the description. I hot glued in some little cardboard shims to make sure everything was stable. After that, I cut out even more long cardboard strips and laid them out across the hat to make the skeleton of the mushroom shape. It's all held in place with hot glue. I used two long strips for the initial base and then four shorter strips that I cut into some right angles and glued in just to add even more structure. Underneath those shorter glued in pieces, I added some more cardboard supports. Oh my gosh, this is huge. I can't fit through a door with this on. Time to cover it. To smooth out all the cardboard bones, I used some cotton batting. I just draped it over the hat, glued it up at the top, and then glued all around the edges. Then I just trimmed away the excess. It stretched pretty well over the hat without a ton of wrinkles. There were a few, but after I added a second layer, it wasn't too hard to smooth them out. Then I got started on the bottom brim of the hat. I used more of the satin fabric and cut out two long strips. Each edge of a strip was glued down across from each other on the brim. I used some embroidery thread and very haphazardly gathered down the inner edge of the hat lining. After it was gathered down, I made some pleats in the fabric. I didn't precisely measure the pleats or anything, I just made as many as would fit and held them down using some sewing clips. After everything was gathered, pleated and clipped, I used, you guessed it, more hot glue to secure it. Then I just trimmed down the edges and some parts on the inside of the hat as well. Okay, we're in the home stretch. I used a red stretch velvet to cover the rest of the hat. I did it in the same way I did the cotton batting layer by gluing it down at the edges, but I left about an inch of overhang so I could fold it over to cover the edge of the bottom of the brim. I just double folded it over and hot glued it down. The fabric is pretty thick, so the edge is a little chunky, but I'm okay with it. 
The nice thing about a nature-inspired costume is that it can have some imperfections, and it just adds character. And finally, I glued on hundreds of these little half pearls for the mushroom spots. I used two different sizes, and I love how they tow the line of elegance and whimsy. And with that, the costume was done. Time for a reveal. I really love how this costume turned out. I feel so ethereal. I love how huge the hat is and how perfectly twirly the skirt is. It was a really fun project and it was fun to document making too. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm so happy to be back and I'll see you again soon. Bye.